Their stop in Albuquerque was supposed to be one night, but their cross-country trip came to a screeching and scary halt. The former CNN reporter who was almost killed in a motel shootout with an armed robber is now thanking the people he says saved his life. News 13's Alex Goldsmith reports. I'm still swollen everywhere. I, I, I wanted to put on a suit today and the pants won't fit. Bound to a wheelchair, hurting, but very much alive. Chuck DeCaro had a message for his heroes. He who fights with me this day shall forever be my brother. And a hundred and so of you who laid your hands on me to save my life, you will be my brother till the day I die. Two and a half weeks ago, DeCaro and his wife, former CNN anchor Lynn Russell, checked into the Motel 6 at Coors and I-40. We just happened to hit the wrong place. <laughs> And that was very unfortunate. Surveillance video shows Tamorio Walton casing the place before shoving Russell into her room at gunpoint. DeCaro was in the shower. Stock naked and soaking wet, he comes into the room and says, What's going on here? <laughs> this man holding a gun to my head. I waited 64 years to get married. I waited 30 years for my dream girl, and I got her. And she was about to die. I yelled, Ranger, and popped my lungs, took out the pistol. He had already started firing at me, went into the crouch, moved into him, closed and destroyed. Walton was killed. DeCaro took three bullets. When you hear your own blood spattering on the floor, and you know from your training you have minutes to live, and all of those guys and girls did not waste one second of one minute. Today, DeCaro is alive thanks to them. And he gave American flags to everyone who helped save him that unforgettable night. While his wife calls him a hero, DeCaro says what he did was more about something else. My wife was going to live at whatever it took, and I just did my duty. It's very simple. Alex Goldsmith, KRQE News 13. Now, DeCaro is set to start rehab for his injury soon. Tamario Walton's alleged accomplice, Sky Bars, is in jail. He's charged with murder for helping cause Walton's death. APD says Bars encouraged Walton to rob people and even supplied the gun. Well, one person is in the hospital this morning after being hit by a car late last night. APD says a car struck a pedestrian at Illith and Coors. The intersection was closed while police investigated. The victim is at the hospital in critical condition. No names have been released, and it's not clear if the driver will face any charges. We're working to find out more about a deadly and fiery tanker crash. It happened just north of Roswell in Chavez County on Friday. The semi-tanker crashed and then went up in flames. Now, this is video from the Roswell Daily Record of the crash aftermath. State police are investigating. They say one person was killed, but the name of that person has not been released. This morning, firefighters are battling a massive wildfire in Southern California. So far, the blaze has destroyed more than 1,000 acres. The fire broke out Friday afternoon along Interstate 15, the main route between Southern California and Las Vegas. The flames moved so fast, drivers were forced to abandon their cars. The fire destroyed at least 20 vehicles. Everybody was stopped because the uh, Emergency vehicles were trying to put the fire out, but it jumped over the freeway and ran up the hill. And uh, so everybody <laughs> ran out of their car and then it started to come over the freeway. So everybody ran out of their cars and ran up the hill. The fires also destroyed a passing 18 wheeler. So far, no injuries or deaths have been reported. Authorities say the wildfire is at least 5% contained. California has been slammed with a historical drought and wildfires there have become common. Well, new this morning, a sailor injured in the Tennessee shooting has died. And we're seeing the moments leading up to the deadly shooting that killed four Marines and now one sailor. That cell phone video of the shootout, the FBI says the gunman, 24-year-old Mohammed Youssef Abdulaziz, was carrying two rifles and a handgun. He was wearing a vest with enough ammunition to reload before he was killed. He was shot and killed. And these officers were under a tremendous amount of gunfire from this individual, and yet they continued to move forward against this target and engage him and, and eliminate that threat, saving numerous lives throughout this community. 
The suspect's computers and other tech devices are at the FBI lab. They're looking at them to see if he had contact with any terrorist groups. Travel records indicate that the suspect did make a trip to Jordan last year and stayed for several months. Well, people from across Chattanooga are paying their respects to the four Marines killed. This memorial popped up in the area of the military facility where the shooting happened. People have been bringing flags, flowers and other mementos. In a somber motorcade Friday afternoon, the victims' bodies were removed from the scene. Back here in New Mexico, car break-ins are up, but other crimes in Rio Rancho are down. So far this year, police saw about 50 fewer home burglaries than last year. Car thefts have also dipped. A Rio Rancho police say they can't pinpoint just how much their crime-fighting efforts have affected crime rates, but they do credit proactive and predictive policing as playing big roles. Our new data software allows police to identify crime trends, narrowing down when and where certain crimes will happen. Now, for more information, you can visit our KRQE News app. The next New Mexico agency to require officers to wear lapel cameras will likely be Santa Fe Police. It's not a done deal yet, but Police Chief Eric Garcia says it's in the works. The department is looking to buy 90 lapel cameras and two docking stations for about $83,000. The city council is scheduled to take up the proposal later this month. Well, this morning, CBS is warning customers that its online photo service may have suffered a data breach. Now, the site and related mobile device apps have been shut off as a precaution. Payment information on the site is collected by an outside vendor and is kept separate from the main CVS.com site and computer system used for the pharmacies. Now, CVS is not saying how many customers could be affected. The city's biggest block party of the year kicks off this afternoon, and officials are saying this year's summer fest will be bigger and better than ever. Organizers are expecting about 40,000 people at Route 66 Summerfest, which is happening today from 2 to 1030. Central from Girard to Washington is closed to traffic. Instead, the street will be full of food vendors, music, activities for kids. Now, the city says the number of beer and wine vendors is nearly doubling, and there will be about four times as many restaurants serving up food and tents along the street. This year we're really focused on more of everything, so we have more food trucks, more artisan markets, more people in the car show, which is a really big draw. Like last year, there will be a free mass wedding at Summerfest. Now, if you're worried about traffic today, you can do the park and ride. A shuttle bus will pick up people parked at University and Lomas and bring them here to Route 66. Now, Central will be closed between Girard and Washington for the event. For more information about Summerfest, just check out our KRQE app. Well, from the trash to the weeds to the crime, most people in Albuquerque avoid the alleys that crisscross the city. Now one neighborhood is looking to change that reputation. They want to make alleys a place to be. Here's News 13's Haley Rush. When you think of alleys, you often think of crime. Like this video that shows a man trying to break into a car in an alley. And here, men looking like they're doing drugs. And most recently, two men hanging in an alley late at night showing off their guns. I think if they use it more, then it's less inviting to, uh, you know, criminals. That's why Susan Michi is encouraging Knob Hill residents to use the alleys instead of avoiding them. Some cities are doing this. They're turning their alleyways into urban trails. Michi says she's seen it work before, but first, neighbors have to clean up the mess. I think it's more inviting to residents, and I like for neighbors to walk down my alley. And it'll look really beautiful along the top of the fence. Rochelle Ariano agrees. There were weeds that were over, you know, six feet high. She recently cleared her alley, but yeah. doesn't plan to stop there. She wants hers to look like these inviting alleys in Spain. They had planted fig trees and apple trees and orange trees. Other Knob Hill neighbors are also on board. Some saying planting cactus along the fences will definitely keep criminals away. As for Michi, she's ready to clear out the criminals for the good of the neighborhood. I'm aware that not all of my homeowners are able to take care of it themselves, and so some of us have to step up and do a little bit more. Haley Rush, KRQE News 13. 
Other ideas for the Knob Hill Alley's Most Beautiful Alley Awards, future alley fun runs, and even water bowls set out to encourage people to walk their dogs there. Now, police tell us they'd love to see people fixing up alleys and using them, saying that would help deter crime. Well, a trial date has been set for the Roswell woman accused of abandoning her baby in a cemetery. Back in May, 28-year-old Lorraine Olivas allegedly cut her one-year-old son's neck at a home in Roswell, then fled with her when her friend threatened to call police. Her son was later found at Lake Arthur Cemetery wearing only a diaper with cuts and scratches and burned feet from walking around barefoot. When police found Olivas, they say she just laughed. She's facing child abuse charges and is scheduled for a trial date of December 12th. The boy is now in state custody. We're working to find out more about a shooting in northeast Albuquerque. It happened Friday afternoon at a home on Clifford near Lomas and Wantabo. Police are not saying much on the case other than it's still under investigation. They do tell us a person was shot once and taken to the hospital. No suspects are in custody. No names have been released. Well, APS is looking to hire more teachers. Right now, there are more than 330 openings. About 100 of those are for special ed teachers. Those numbers are similar to what the district saw this time last year. APS says right now districts across the country are struggling to fill the special ed positions because there are so many requirements. As for the other openings, APS says it believes it can fill most of them before school starts. If you're interested in applying, APS is holding a job fair next week. Go to our KRQE app for more info. A Knob Hill restaurant that was the center of a lawsuit is closing its doors. News 13 has learned Route 66 Malt Shop will go out of business. Now it's unclear why, but owner Eric Seaman recently settled a minimum wage lawsuit with the city. Seaman was slapped with the suit after he refused to pay the new wage increase. The case went to trial last month, but a settlement was reached. No word yet on the terms. New Mexicans upset about changes to the food stamp program took their message to the state capitol. Yesterday, the group from Albuquerque went to Santa Fe to testify at a SNAP benefit hearing. The state is proposing work and training requirements be reinstated for some teenagers and parents with children over six years old. The state plans to begin phasing in the changes in October. Now, similar rules were in place before the economy tanked in 2009. Well, this morning, a Texas state trooper is on administrative leave after a woman died in jail. Now, Sandy Bland was taken there after being pulled over for a traffic violation. Video shows the trooper pulling her over, then pulling her out of the car and tossing her to the ground. The sheriff says Bland had become combative. She was charged with assaulting an officer and booked into jail. Three days later, she was found hanging in her cell. Officials say it was suicide. Bland's family and friends suspect foul play. We're very suspicious and we're a very tight community and we're very upset that this has happened. And uh, it seems like there's nothing really being done about it. The DA says they have reviewed video from Bland's cell and it appears no one went inside at the time of her death. The Texas Commission on Jail Standards has cited the jail where Bland died for not properly monitoring inmates. And two people managed to survive a chopper crash in Ireland that was all caught on camera. Security video shows the chopper hovering above a canal before it tried to land. One of its propellers clipped a nearby pub, and that's when the chopper lost control and crashed. Only one person suffered minor injuries. No word why the chopper was flying so close to the pub and how much damage it caused. Also on video, people in an office building in Columbia got quite a shock when a car smashed through a wall. Security cameras caught the car crashing through, hitting one person who, amazingly, suffered only minor injuries. The office manager avoided getting struck by using his office chair to wheel out of the way just in time. No word on the cause of the crash.